Hello and welcome to Take Back Time. This is Penny Zanker and I'm your host. And today I need this guest so badly because we're going to talk about decluttering. And, uh, you know, that can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people, but I've been traveling the last uh, couple of days, weeks, and uh, my space is a mess. And I know I, people say to me, oh, Penny, you must be so structured and, and clean and neat. And, and I'm not. It doesn't come natural to me. So uh, the more tips and tricks I can get, the better. And I think for all of you as well. So I'm excited to introduce today's guest. Uh, Gail Wood is with us and she has written the book literally on uh, decluttering. And so she is going to share with us some tips and tricks and uh, get us back into shape. So Gail, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. So, you know, are you a neat freak and like, were you born that way? Uh, I was definitely not born this way. <laughs> and, um, but as, as I got older and I was in that kind of college age and I was moving around a lot, I kind of discovered the joy of having less stuff. I was like, oh, this is fun to be able to, you know, pick up and move from house to house with just a car. <laughs> Right. I wish that was possible. <laughs> uh, I, I definitely am a fan of simplified. And then I started applying it, you know, to other areas of my life. And I realized at, at one point I was so busy and I was like, you know what? I need to declutter the things that I'm doing, the way I'm spending my time. I need to look at that the same way I look at, you know, a closet full of stuff. What do I need? Absolutely. That's useful to me. What can I get rid of or do less, have less of. Absolutely. Right. And then there's also our mind. We also have to declutter our mind, right? There's our schedule, there's our closet and there's our mind. So multiple yeah, our to-do list, our beliefs, we can declutter on really on every level. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, what do you think is the biggest thing that holds people back that, you know, that, that thing that if they could just get past that, as far as decluttering goes, yeah, um, probably feeling that feeling of, will I be okay without these items? You know, and to me, that's a bit of a scarcity mindset. Mm. It's really an abundance mindset to be able to let things go because you're telling yourself, I can let these things go. And I know on some level that if I need them again, I can, I have the resources to replenish and replace. So yeah. I, I, I would say, what do you say about this as well? So I, I agree with you that I think our whole attitude, the whole time management, even the word, right? We can't manage time. So right. it immediately causes that scarcity mindset. Yeah. Uh, so I, I totally agree with that. And my twist on that is I think also that it's more about control when, when we talk about mm -hmm. like those things and also uh, our tasks, right? The, the, the things that we do that are less important that, uh, you know, what keeps us from letting go is our need for control. What do you think that has to do with, with scarcity? Cause there, there is a connection, but I don't know that I can voice it. Maybe you can put some, uh, some connections. Yeah, no, I, I think you nailed it. I think for a lot of us, it is control and, you know, that feeling of, well, if I don't do it, what's going to happen? So it's that feeling of just, you know, stepping into the, the un unknown, mm -hmm. which is hard for everybody to do. And will people be upset with me because yeah. their thing is less important than my thing that I have to do, but that's the thing I have to let go of, right? But then if you think about it, like stepping into the unknown, that is kind of having faith, which I think relates back to that abundance mindset. I think so, but, but yeah. you know, I, I think it goes like when we're talking about tasks, right. And letting go of something that's less important that maybe someone else needs right. From us. Right. Right. I think, I, I think a lot of people will put on that hat and say, I don't buy it, that it's faith. Like someone's going to be mad at me. Um, my, you know, my, my boss is not going to agree with me. Like, um, but I do think that if I were to relate to faith and then I'll, and then I'll open the floor to you, okay. I guess it would be faith in the understanding that I can communicate, like we don't have the faith in ourselves. Maybe that's it. I'm just working this out as you're talking. <laughs> um, we don't have the faith in ourselves to communicate effectively so that 
and, and the faith in someone else that they're going to understand. Would that be? That's, faith? that's exactly it. You hit the nail on the head. It's the faith that you can handle it when that, maybe that backlash or controversy comes up. It's like, okay, well, if that happens, which would be unpleasant, I can still, I can handle it. I can and handle I, it. Yeah. And and I, that's I, something I, I read recently a book about, it was called Face Your Fears and Do It Anyway. Yeah. And and it was, so she was like, you know what, if you keep saying that over and over, whatever happens, I know I can handle it. You know, it like takes all that fear away. (laughs) Well, and and there are different aspects with some of those emotions, that exact statement, but replace it by guilt is what I needed to do as a single mom. It was feel the guilt and do it anyway. I needed to take care of myself. I needed to go out and have a night out on my own. Uh, and instead of, you know, yes, I felt guilty, but I had to feel the guilt and do it anyway. So I think that that expression sometimes uh, is, you know, cross unproductive emotions that are there to protect us. But at the same time, we, we, uh, we obsess over them, right? Or, or they, mm-hmm. we, we need well, they to stop make- us. They could stop us in our yeah. tracks. Yes. In, in times where they don't need to stop us. Yeah. So that's interesting. So, okay. So it's, um, people are getting caught up in this scarcity mindset. I've been talking a lot lately about letting go and I'm a big fan of, of simplifying, uh, where I'm best at simplifying is not necessarily in my stuff, but in my thought process, when I'm trying to solve a problem, um, how does one make that shift? Like, let's say you were coaching me, right. And I'm good at simplifying what it's solving the problem. How do I how do I simplify when it comes to my, my physical clutter? We're kind of going to bounce around here on different types of clutter, (laughs) different types of clutter, right? So, so I would say, you know, apply your logic to it. You know, let's take coffee cups, for example. Okay. Oh my God. Take all your coffee cups out of your cabinet and you have 52. How did you know? (laughs) So I would say, okay, even on the busiest day of your life in your house, your whole family is over. How many coffee cups can you use in one day? And I would just really it's take that into consideration. How many do you actually need given, you know, the variety of circumstances? Right. And then how big is your cabinet? Because we have, you know, we have limitations. Yes. Um, depending on how big our house is and really how much storage we have. So, so I would coach you on those two things. And then from there, we would kind of say, okay, well, Are there any that you just are like, oh yeah, these can go. So we do kind of that low hanging fruit first. Low hanging fruit, right. And say, okay, well, these five, I never really liked anyway. So those are in the box. (laughs) And then it would be, okay, well, you said you could store 20 coffee cups is what we decided would be reasonable for your home and your needs. So then it would be a matter of looking and and saying, kind of comparing them side by side. Do I like this one better than this one? (laughs) Right. So you get down to the 20 that, that you want to have. And then right. you've got your favorite 20, which is nice. Right. Yeah. Awesome. I, I love that. Right. And, and you can, you can apply this to every, every area that you want to declutter, right? I could go from room to room and, and mm-hmm. take different areas and, and say, what is it that the space can hold that feels good, that yeah. right, doesn't feel cluttered and then, and then process of elimination, uh, get, get things out. Yeah. And also, yeah. And then the whole, how many do you need? Like, oh my gosh, like we have so many extras of things, like pots and pans. I mean, even if I cook a big meal, I might use four. (laughs) Yeah, totally. We just purged pots and pans. So uh, there was a purging uh, because I came together with my boyfriend and we had two sets and we're like, we just definitely don't need that. Um, So yeah, I, I think that's, that's true is we have multiples of things Mm-hmm. Uh, and we just have things that are sitting around for a long time that we, we just don't need anymore. They don't serve the purpose that they once did. So, um, yeah. and there's a time cost and an energy cost to having things. Mm-hmm. You now, when you have to, I don't know, stack your pots in a certain way to make them fit. And then it takes you two extra minutes every night to take them out and put them away again, or however long it takes you. It's like, that's just extra time and energy. And it kind of like will weigh you down. And you're like, oh, well, I want to cook dinner, but I got to rearrange the whole pot cabinet to do it. (laughs) 
So let's <laughs> talk about that same concept and how that might relate to our schedule, right? And and some some tips and tricks on that because everything that you said is is relatable, right? Is we have more tasks to do than we can actually do in a day. And, yeah. uh, and people get uh, caught up in that, in that clutter and they're, they say they have competing priorities, but the truth is they don't have any priorities because they're not setting this is more important than that. So how do we apply sort of that, that declutter concept from your perspective to our schedule? Yeah, so, you know, one thing I, I like to have people do is just kind of think through your whole day from the time you get up in the morning until, you know, until you go to bed at night and how are you spending, maybe break it down in like 15 minute chunks. How are you spending your time and really look at it real detailed because it's interesting what you'll find you're, you're doing. Um, and then say, well, you know, what kind of things am I doing that don't really matter to me that much? Like, I don't know, maybe you're cooking breakfast every morning, but you'd be just as happy with, um, I don't know, one of those smoothies that you just pop open <laughs> right. or something, you know? So, and then just looking at detail because a lot of times it's just like our physical clutter. We're just doing extra things and we haven't considered why we're doing them, if we need to be doing them. And what and, the value is too, right? We're, yeah. we're not considering the value of, of its impact to our day, to our end result of what we're looking to yeah. and, and And then some, a lot of things we'll decide to keep. I know when I did my big schedule declutter, and then suddenly my husband was taking our son to school every morning. I was like, yes, that's awesome. <laughs> and he told me, he said, you don't have to get up and make breakfast for Santino anymore. And I was like, you know what? I like to, mm -hmm. and it gets my day started. So I said, I need to believe that he needs me to make him breakfast. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we can really pick and choose. Well, and there's probably some moments in there, like, you know, of, of connection time that, that yeah. you're going to miss. So uh, so I, I think it's a good point in there is, is it has to serve you right in some way. And, and that's uh, one way to, to choose is what, what the value is to you. Yeah. And now we're homeschooling and I'm like, get your own breakfast. I see you all right. day. <laughs> right. So, so, you know, it's interesting. You talk about down to the 15 minutes. I just want to share for the readers, right? There's different mm -hmm. ways to look at this, but no, no matter how you look at it, I'm a big fan also of doing that time audit of stepping back and looking at where you are actually spending your time, comparing that to the goals and things that you want to achieve and seeing where the gaps are. I come at it from a high level perspective mm -hmm. and I actually don't look at it from a, a detail. So I, I think it's good that we've got the different perspectives. Um, I look at it from more of a category perspective mm -hmm. is how much time are you spending in each category? So how much administration time are you spending? How much strategy time, like really, if you're, you know, building your business, you know, how much time are you spending on the business versus in the business or, uh, you know, depending on what your role is or what you're doing and, and what's important for your, you to achieve, there's, there's different categories. So I kind of look at it like that as to what percentage do you need to be spending in each category in order to reach your, your goal. So it's kind of nice for people to hear that there's two different ways to approach it. Yeah. And sometimes if you look at these little things and you say, oh, I wish I was spending three hours a week on strategy, mm -hmm. but you, you don't feel like you can't, this is where you can kind of find that, that time. Absolutely. And that's where you can pick those out for sure. And say, okay, there's here 15 minutes and here and here. So combining the two uh, approaches can be, sounds like really valuable. And one thing I did that I thought was really fascinating, um, probably just because I'm a nerd, but <laughs> I added up how much time I was spending on things over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And I was like, well, if I've drove German children to school 30 minutes a day for 15 years, I was like, I've spent three months of my life driving children to school. Yeah. That makes you rethink it. There, there is a magnitude there for sure. Yeah. When you, when you keep thinking, oh, it's 15 minutes here, it's 20 minutes there. It seems like nothing, but when you add it up, oh, I'm doing this errand every week and it's just something I could possibly eliminate. Totally. Combine with something else. Ask my husband to do while he's out anyway. Yeah. And when you see the value of how it adds up, I think it makes you more likely to make positive changes. 
I think food shopping is one of those really big shifts that people have started to make if they didn't already, right? Especially with the pandemic, having people order online. Like how much time does one spend food shopping every week? Multiply that by, right? The number of years, mm -hmm. it's incredible. Or just one year, right? How much would I spend this year in food shopping? <laughs> I can do a ton of other things in that time, right? So uh, that's something that I think people can consider. And I have not gone completely online with my food shopping, but like now that you're saying that, I'm mm -hmm. thinking I'm gonna revisit that because I could be saving a lot more time by just having them ordered. And especially since there's so much things that are standard that I need every week, mm -hmm. it could just easily be delivered. So maybe you just saved me hours of time. Well, when I added up my food shopping for a year, I, I was like, that's a month of eight hour work days. It was 20 right. eight hour work days that I was schlepping around the grocery store because I figured I did about 90 minutes a week to go to the store, do all the shopping, put it away, run back for stuff I forgot. Right. So that is one I love that, but I don't like food shopping and some people really like it. So if it's something you like to do, certainly keep doing it and find yeah. something else to look at. Well, I kind of like it, but um but it's not, I don't like it as much yeah. as the time savings, right? So it's always something to say, okay, yeah. well, then I could do it once a month, right. right? I could, I could do it if I'm shopping for something special, like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so I think that's a, a, a microcosm, right? Of, of everything else that we're looking at is yeah. it's not an all or nothing. We tend to be interesting, I, th I think, in our thought processes, right? Is that many people come at things at an all or nothing, yeah. like, uh, if I'm going to eat these two chips, I might as well eat the whole bag, right? So it, it's not like, you know, uh, I can't go to the gym because I only have 20 minutes, you know, of course you can, right? So it's, mm -hmm. uh, I think we we get caught up in this all or nothing thinking and that that's also maybe a, is that scarcity? What is that? The all or nothing thinking? I think it's just human nature. <laughs> to, <laughs> to, I do that all the time. I hear, I read something in a book or I hear something on a podcast and I just take it as like, the gospel truth. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll look later and be like, why am I doing it this way? I just, right. Well, that's, that you have to, I don't know, post on Instagram twice a day. So I've been doing it for years and not really questioning it. <laughs> that's, that's something different to me than all or nothing thinking. What that is, is that we're not thinking, right. We're caught up in, uh, in what Bill Gates calls right. Busy is the new stupid is, yeah. is that we're so busy that we're not making, we've lost the ability to do critical thinking. So we're not yeah. questioning and seeing, is that appropriate for me? Mm -hmm. you know, it might be appropriate for some people, but maybe not for the business that you do or, yeah. you know, so it is true that we just kind of adopt this, uh, this, what we're reading as gospel when uh, it's, it's, it's just not like we, we yeah. need to do critical thinking to see what's really important to us and where we are in our business, in our life, and make sure that that's, that's going to be appropriate for our goals. I can tell you so many people that I know uh, run around like that with their chicken, chicken with the head cut off, you know, kind of thing where they're doing a lot of things that they heard or what they should do. Uh, and, uh, and it's totally inappropriate for their business and where they are and what their target market is. And what's funny too, is I'm, I'm also a coach and I would tell any coaching client, well, if you want to do that, test it, mm -hmm. you know, do it for three months, four months, see if you got the results you wanted and then move on, you know, or, or re right. rework it, rejig it. So right. testing but, is a smart, smart strategy there. Mm -hmm. It's funny though. I feel like I do. Sometimes I'll take something on and sometimes it can be stuff, you know, from our childhood, like, oh, my mom always did it this way. Um, like even cooking, that was a big one where I realized a lot of my time was going to cooking a sit down family dinner every single night. And I was like, although I love family dinner and I love cooking, I don't love doing it seven days a week. Mm. You know, so that was something I was like, you know what, maybe I'll cook two or three nights a week and then find other things to do the other nights. Right. Absolutely. I just found somebody, a partner who cooks. So that's, yeah, that's good. That works great too. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so let's skip back to like, do you have any other, uh, 
hacks or tips that you can give us, you know, that can make uh, decluttering our schedule easier. So the first one was the audit, right? Um, and yeah, to, the to audit, really figure up that time cost. And then the third one would probably be to really get comfortable kind of advocating for yourself and asking for help. And, you know, just empowering yourself to say, if this isn't something that I want to do anymore. Let's, as a family or in a work situation, let's figure out a way to do it that works for everybody. You know, and I was shocked. I just asked my husband, I said, hey, could you do one afternoon a week of all the after school activities? I'm, I'm overwhelmed and I have work to do. And he was like, I'll do two. Right. And well, that's the thing is, is we don't ask, right? We don't ask. We don't because we're we, coming back to what we started with in the beginning is we're afraid of that conflict. Mm -hmm. So to to avoid the conflict uh, or to avoid disappointing someone or anything like that, we will we'll basically throw ourselves under the bus, you know, because we're not willing to to ask. It, it seems like such a crazy thing. I've gotten I don't know whether I got wiser or there was some point in my career where I just started to ask, yeah. when do you need this by? Like even a simple question like that, you know, what's the most important part of this that you need so that, so that we can come up with solutions. If I don't have time to do the whole thing, could I do part of it by this date? And then the other part later. So we need to ask more and communicate our needs and, mm -hmm. and challenges. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I did that too with, with the cooking and it was so funny because I said, you know what, it's, we're going to have make your own dinner night one day a week. My family was thrilled. They were like, we love make our own dinner night. They're like, you mean we don't have to eat what you tell us to? <laughs> I was like, oh, I didn't know I was for forcing you guys to eat all this delicious food all the time. <laughs> So, right. You don't know until you, uh, until you yeah. ask, right. You can tell them, them to cook for you, right. That could be it as well. Not just make your own dinner, but rotate around the family that everybody makes dinner one night. And during the pandemic, you know, my, like I said, my, my boyfriend, a fiance now, he, um, he loves to cook. Um, but it was getting overwhelming with how many meals we had to cook during the pandemic that normally people weren't yeah. home. And yeah. so he's like, I can't, I can't do this. I also have to work during the day. I can't make a big, big lunch for everybody. You know, everybody should pick a day. Everybody, you know, you cook one day, you cook another day, and then that's a fair distribution. So uh, but it doesn't happen unless you communicate, right? And and mm -hmm. a lot of people get frustrated while they're doing too much, and uh, and it's simply just asking. And and look, you you had the result that everybody was happy with with that. Yeah, we can we can really walk around feeling real put upon when we're not even asking for things to be different, right? And then one other thing that comes to mind is just being okay with with being a little different. Cause if you're doing things differently than pretty much most people, you know, there's times where I feel like I'm the only mom that doesn't go to some stuff. <laughs> I'm the only mom that doesn't sit all the way through practice and watch the kids the whole time. But, you know, I just have to be okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I'm glad that I uh, have a different, different <laughs> set of parents around here. I, I drop off. I do not stay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's um, and we carpool, right? And and yeah. exactly, there's uh, we just have to let go, and it's okay to be different. I I totally agree. Is we have mm -hmm. to do what's right for us. Yeah, I yeah. hang out every once in a while. I'm like, I I, I want to be liked for sure, but I'm also can't just sit here and gab for two hours every day. <laughs> right. Right. So awesome. All right. Well, thank you. So, do you have anything else that you wanted to share before we sign off on today's interview? Well, if anybody would like to check out the book, Decluttering Your Schedule, it is at my website, elevatewithgail.com, and it's free. You can just come download a copy. Awesome. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. Thank you so is much. Is there any, anything else that you wanted to, to share or any other site that you wanted people to check out? Oh, you know, if you're into time management, and you, you probably know Laura Vanderkamp, I'll just share one of my favorite authors. Um, it was so funny because I was writing this book and going through this process and then I discovered her books and I was like, we've discovered the same stuff. <laughs> right. Isn't that funny though? Like, like I think that it's, you've like had this yeah. epiphany and then you see that like, you know, like, oh, people that you admire or, or 
other people in the world have uh, have come up with the same thing, but independently, it's interesting. Yeah, but I really I really love her writing and her books, and yeah, um, she's great. I, I I interviewed her I think a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, wonderful! Fantastic. So. All right. Well, yeah. So we, we can put that in the show notes if you have a special link to her, um, one of her articles or books or something like that. That would be great. Okay. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Well, thanks for being on, Gail. And thank you all for being here because, uh, you know, whether you are honest with yourself or not, I'll bet you there's either a room in your house that's a little a closet or something where everything gets shoved in. Maybe it's time, it's spring now, maybe it's time to do some spring cleaning in terms of physical clutter. And then maybe it's time also to take a look at your schedule to step back and see what are you doing that you don't need to be doing anymore or uh, some pockets of, of time that you didn't realize, like Gail was saying, if you add it up, how much time you're actually spending on some of those activities, maybe that'll motivate you to uh, organize yourself a little bit differently. And then of course, it's clean the clutter in your head. What's going on in your head that you need to clear out that's holding you back from moving forward in any area, in your relationships, in your health, in your business. Uh, it's time to clean that clutter. So thanks for being here. My name is Penny Zanker, and this is Take Back Time. We'll see you on the next episode.